Hi, it's Andy, and in this video we're going to cover David Ruiz, There Must Be More. Okay, so I'm assuming that your praise and worship band probably has a drummer and a bass player and a keyboard player and a lead singer and a guitarist, and so you've got a guitar and you're going to join the band, and so I'm going to bet that the band has probably got a pretty good rhythm. They're probably pretty solid, and so... I'm going to assume that you're not the one that's holding the band together. If you're probably the worship leader, you're probably not looking up this video to try to learn the song. Um, so if you're just a, a guitar player that's playing along in the background, or you're just playing rhythm guitar or lead guitar along with the tune, and you're just getting started learning this song, then probably what you're going to do is you're going to hit each chord once, And you're just going to play along with the drummer as he keeps the beat. It's four beats on each chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So basically to play this song, all you have to do is be able to switch chords every four seconds or every four beats. So let's work on that first. And... Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a really cool strumming technique, and that will be assuming that you are the rhythm player of the song that's holding everything together, and everybody's going to be following your rhythm. So I'll show you something really cool to do with that. Here we go. So all of these chords are three fingers. Well, most of them are anyways. So the first chord is a G. Now a lot of people will show you the three-finger G. The G that has three fingers. Um, I call that the acoustic guitar G or the folk music G. Or some people call it the open G. But I prefer to play the four finger G, especially in this song. Okay, that's uh, I guess the rock and roll G. And here we go. First finger, second fret on the fifth string. Second finger, third fret on the sixth string. Then your third finger, this is different now, it's going to go third fret on the second string. And then your pinky finger is going to squeeze in there and it's going to go third fret on the first string. So you've got two fingers really squeezed in there close and you've got all four fingers on the fretboard. Okay, so you may be asking, well, why would I do it this way? Isn't, it, isn't the other way easier? Well, no, not when you switch to D, because when you play this four-finger G and you hit the chord, now you got to get ready to play D next. Okay, well, luckily, since you're playing the four-finger G, you've already got one of your fingers in the right spot. If you keep finger three right where it is without lifting it up, you're well on your way to be, you know, setting up to hit that D chord. Just leave that finger right where it is. Don't even move it. Then just take your first finger, place it second fret on the third string. Then take your middle finger, place that one second fret on the high E string. Bang, there's your D chord. So you just switch from G to D, and you got to leave one of your fingers in position. So if I played the basic G with three fingers, I would have to take all my fingers off the strings, lift them all up, then start to place the D. Okay, I don't want to have to start from scratch. I would rather have one finger that I get to keep in place. That's my anchor finger. That finger is not going to move. It's already in the right spot. So there's one common tone, or one common finger, I should say, between those two chords, the four finger G and the D. Okay, that's how players play with their eyes closed, because with that one finger in place, you've got a guide finger. And so since that finger is not going anywhere, then it becomes a lot easier. One of the toughest things to do is to take all your fingers off and put them all back on again. That always leaves you a little disoriented, especially if you're just starting to practice these chords. So my advice would be take that four finger G, leave your third finger in place, don't lift it up, then play the D. 
Okay, now if only we could do that on the next chord, which is an E minor. Sorry, there's no shortcuts here. We're going to have to lift them all up. Um, there's no other way to do it. Luckily, E minor is easy, though. Two fingers close together. That's second fret on the fifth string, second fret on the fourth string. Okay, now, are there any fingers you can keep when jumping to a C chord? C chord's the next chord in the song. Any fingers there that you can leave in the same place? The answer is yes, your middle finger. Keep that middle finger on, don't take it off. It's already on the right note. If you take it off, you'll have to just put it right back in the place it was. Don't do that. So here we go. Second finger, keep it there. First finger, place it on the first fret, second string. Third finger, place it on the third fret, fifth string. Bang, there's your C chord. Okay, and then it's time to start the riff over again. We're back to G. Sorry, you can't keep any of the fingers there. There's no common tones, so no common fingers, I should say. Anyway, so there's two shortcuts there where you can keep a common finger. Let's study them again. Here we go. We're starting over. Four finger G. Now keep that third finger on. Don't take it off. Switch to D. Okay, you'll have to lift all the fingers to go to E minor. Okay, and then second finger stays. Don't take that finger away. Set up a C. And then you repeat. Lift them all up. We're back to G. Okay, now if you really want to master this song and play it up on stage, you know, as a member of the worship band, you should try to learn how to play those chords with your eyes closed. So practice them for a while with your eyes open, and then close your eyes, see if you can make all those changes, and just take your time, you're not in a hurry. See if you can play all those chords and find all the right notes by feel with your eyes closed. If you can, then you're really ready to jam with the band. Okay, now let's try that riff with the drum machine. All right, we've got the drum machine going. Here we go. It's four counts on each chord. We're just going to ring it out. Get ready. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, switch. One. Switch. You count the four beats. Tap your foot. One, two, three. Switch. Now, if the rest of the band is good, if your drummer's good, and your bass player's good, and your guitar player is solid, you can just play this, and it'll be easy. You're just kind of filling in. No one's really following your rhythm. You're the one that's following them. That's the best way to start with your worship band. Follow the leader, the guy that's holding the song together with his rhythm. You follow him. You change chords when he does. Don't try to play exactly what he plays. Just make the chord changes. And of course, end on a G. Okay, now let's assume that you are the leader and the rest of the band is going to follow your rhythm. So, you can't just hold each chord for four counts. That's not going to work. You'll have to establish a rhythm. And so the best rhythm for this tune sounds something like this. So, what did I just do? Well, first I started with palm muting. My palm was 
against all the strings and the bridge. It's about halfway on the bridge and halfway on the string, covering all six of the strings. And so when I play, the strings don't ring out. They just kind of go thump, thump. And so I'm starting with my hand in that position. And then I'm just moving my pick down and up. This is what I call the windshield wiper effect. So it's just an automatic down up all the time. You just turn on the automatic windshield wiper and it goes up, down, up, down, up, down, and it never does anything else. Okay, first learn that. Okay, and you can vary the amount of palm muting if you want to take it away. And put it back on and then really get a lot of palm muting maybe a little less okay maybe I only want to palm mute the lowest sounding strings but not the highest ones maybe I want to palm mute all the strings again okay so the windshield wiper effect I just go down and up all the time I never do anything different. Okay, now let's talk about the other thing I threw in there, which is a thump or a thud. I'm literally taking my hand and hitting the guitar and hitting the strings with um, this part of my hand right here. And so when I hit the strings, first I get a thud out of the guitar, and that sounds nice and beefy with a lot of bass. So. If I combine that with letting my pick also hit the string at the same time, you can hear a little bit of the chord. Now I'm not going to strum hard. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to really loosen up my pick hold and I'm just going to thump the strings by hitting the palm of my hand on the strings. I'm going to practice that for a minute. Okay, but I'm going to allow my pick to bounce off the strings also. And I'm not really trying to pick the strings. I'm just hitting the strings with the side of my hand. Maybe my pick will also make contact with the strings as well. A little bit. I'm not going to get a lot of notes out of this. It's more of a thud. Okay, maybe I will just only have the pick hit the lowest string so I get that rich bass note there. And that's what it sounds like. I'm simultaneously hitting the string with my hand and picking it. It's important to take your hand off when you're done so that you bounce off. Now if I just left my hand there then it wouldn't make any music. We gotta take it off. 